What is up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Panda here. Today, we're going to be talking about Watcher of Realms, specifically about the banner coming this weekend, and if it is something that's worth pulling on. We have some pretty crazy banners that are in the potential pipeline, and I'm a little curious if people even have the summons left over after the crazy banners we've had so far with the anniversary. Let's dive right in. And welcome back to the channel, guys. So we have some interesting stuff happening this weekend, some stuff that's already shown up. And also, I believe we also have a confirmed banner for Ancients coming this weekend with Praetis, uh, which is a pretty big thing for, um, you know, people who have been holding on to their Ancients, people who don't have Praetis. Praetis is probably one of the best champions in the game. So if you have any ancient summons it's probably worth pulling on the praetis banner i'm just going to be straightforward with you praetis is so good in so many different game modes i mean if we go and we look at guild boss um and we look at the brand new guild boss right let's go look we might actually not have too many here but look yeah here we go we got a2 praetis praetis uh let's see there's got to be more praetises i'm sure there's more praetis right praetis right there praetis Right, he's in a ton of these top teams, um, and it's it's just it's, he's just super super good. I'm sure there's a ton in Apocalypse One as well. Um, oh no, that's not a Praetis, that's an Alistair. But I'm sure he's in tons of comps. I know there's another one right there. I know that he is just really good here. I don't know how good he is in like I don't think he's used here, is he? I think it's mainly Soul Cadence that's used here, but um, he's he's all over the place, right? He's also in uh, the Immortal Codex. If we go over here, you'll see him in the rankings, you know, of a ton of these bosses. Um, oh, I can't look at the rankings of... Oh, I can't look at the rankings of these other bosses. Okay, well, I, d I know that he's in, like, Lord of the Sticks. He's a really, really good top boss uh, boss killer there. So he's, he's a really, really, really good. And if you have any ancient summons lying around, even if you're not close to pity, it's probably worth taking that chance and picking up a Praetis. Now, of course, if you already have a Praetis, it might not make the most sense to go for Praetis again. I know his Awakenings are pretty good, but um, I think you're probably better off going for another Ancient Exclusive Lord. If that's just my own personal opinion, you guys do what you will. Praetis is very good, and the more investment in him, probably the better. However, one of the other banners that I really want to talk about is the Surprise Invocation of Spirits, and if it's worth summoning on. Uh, we have been getting a lot more of the guaranteed summoning events happening, right? Um, uh, if we go and we look um, at all of the different champions we have in the game, let's just go through and look at count how many of them were 250 guarantees. Gwendolyn, there's one. Gwendolyn was a 250 guaranteed. Reeve is a 250 guaranteed who came back twice, right? Uh, Lust was a 250 guaranteed. Uh, Dahlia is a 250 guaranteed. Um, who else we have? Anora was a 250 guaranteed. Falcha was a 250 guaranteed, right? We have a lot of 250 guaranteed summons, uh, champions that have been coming to the game. And I wanted to kind of discuss about whether or not that is something that you should be keeping in mind when you are pulling on certain things. For example, the one plus one banner is probably one of the better banners in the game. The reason I say this is because this is basically a guaranteed way to get yourself two legendaries for the price of one. Um, and if you are smart about things and you sit yourself on a good pity, right, you're able to manipulate it to the point where you can guarantee that you get those two on very little summons. For example, I have, let's see, 12, 15, I am only 16 into pity, but let's just assume that this was 216, right? Let's assume that this Anai wasn't here and that I had 200 other summons in here. Well, what does that mean? That means I'm guaranteed to get a legendary in my next four summons, right? It could be 217, 218, 219, or 220, but it's going to guarantee that I get it by 220. Well, what does that mean? That basically means, right, that I'm taking what's a 220 pity, but I'm getting two legendary for it, which means I'm basically getting one legendary for 110 summons, right? 
and it's twice, right? So I'm getting two legendaries for 220 instead of one legendary for 220, provided the fact that I would have hit Pity at 220 no matter what banner I pulled on. So there's a good chance that some of you are in this situation because you went really, really hard on the Boreas, Lucius, and Ares banner, right? And you didn't get him, and you're probably sitting pretty close to Pity. And so that makes it really possible for this one plus one to be really, really good for you. If you're early on in the game, this could be amazing. This could give you a really good chance at getting a really good champion that could progress your account in crazy ways. However, does it make sense to hold your summons for something potentially better? I will say that there are a lot of champions in this game. If we go and we look in the gallery, there's a lot of champions that are available. There are some, of course, that are ancient exclusive, and there are some that are really not that great. Um, it might make more sense to hold your summons for a banner that has a 15x on a champion that makes more sense for you. For example, if you're sitting here and, you know, you have a 15x for an amazing champion, like, for example, Silas, right? Silas, one of the best champions in the game. Or Hex. Hex is one of the best champions in the game. Um, you know, Hotsut is still one of the best champions in the game, right? Uh, Vierna or, you know, a anyone. Boreas is even still a really good champion in the game. Any of these champions that have very very good value in several different game modes could be way better than the potential of two different legendaries because those two legendaries could be legendaries that aren't really that amazing for example it could be something like you know uh seraphina who is good but not game breaking and shamir or zealous who again are good in their respective locations but aren't amazing in some other areas it could be something like kai who is just kind of bad in most places and cratch who although we know that he's fasty's favorite <laughs> is not the greatest champion in the game so there is a, a something to be thought about when you are deciding whether or not it makes the most sense to pull on a surprise invocation of spirits I will say, if you are brand new to the game, Surprise Invocation of Spirits with the ability to guarantee yourself a pity for relatively cheap is a very, very good decision. So if you're sitting in the 160 to 200 range of pity and you have enough to guarantee that you get to the pity of 220, I think it's probably worth it to go in on the Surprise Invocation of Spirits. The reason I say that is because as a new cha a new player in the game, you need to get champions in order to progress your account. If you don't have champions, it's going to be difficult to progress in various game modes. You know, for example, it, you know, Iona can do really, really good things for a majority of Gear Raid 1, but it's going to be difficult without insane gear to make Iona work on stages 19, 20, and 21. So it, it makes more sense to try and get yourself a legendary mage that just has higher base stats and a potentially better kit. Now, of course, it's not always the case. There are some legendaries that are not that great, which is why there's the risk of summoning on the Surprise Invocation of Spirits. However, because of the fact that this is a 2 for one guarantee provided you can hit the pity or happen to get lucky on a pull, I think it's very good for early, early game players. Now, if you're a mid-game player and you are going for, say, you have, you know, one or two of the stage 19s, 20s, and 21s completed, then maybe it makes more sense to hold off for a specific champion. For example, let's say that you're sitting in Gear Raid uh, 1, 2, and 3, and you uh, have 21 on Gear Raid 1 and 2, but you don't have 21 on Gear Raid 3. And let's say you're missing vital champions for that, such as uh, someone to handle the left side like a Nyx or a Razak. Uh, or you're missing someone to handle the right side like a Hatset or an Alora, Or you're missing a boss killer like a Silas or a Cetrum. Well, there's a good chance that it would make more sense for you to try and hold off on picking up 
a champion that's going to help you in gear raid three because that's going to progress your account a lot more than potentially getting a third fourth fifth mage right or another healer that's not amazing when it comes to gear raid now if you're a late game player and you're really just searching for things like uh you know the ability to get awakenings i think this is not necessarily the end of the world because this could give you really really good awakenings and even if you get awakenings on terrible champions right like for example uh nocturne is my highest awakened character at a4 now nocturne is an okay champion right he's not game breaking uh but he's not amazing at the same time however if i were to pull a fifth nocturne or i guess technically a sixth nocturne to get my a5 then that would make every nocturne i pull going forward turning into legendary tokens which would allow me to save up and pick up something like a valkyra soul stone which would be really really good for my valkyra right because my valkyra here is sitting at whoops is sitting at a two wherever she is she's somewhere in here she's sitting at a2 which means if I were able to get that soul stone, I could take her to A3, which is ginormous. It's a 50% damage increase based on the shield when she uses her ultimate. So that's huge for Valkyra's burst potential while she's in her ultimate. So there are things like this to keep in mind. Now, personally, myself, I am not anywhere near pity. I also have very little diamonds, and I don't have a lot of summons because, like probably most of you, I burned through most of my summons with the guaranteed 250 banners. As you saw previously, uh, I have picked up both Dahlia who's right here, and Anora, who's right here. And so, you know, I went and I burned through 500-ish summons, probably more even, I think, because I also went in on the Boreas, Lucius, and Ares banner, um, you know, and so I'm, I'm poor, I'm broke, right? I don't have the summons, and I really want to start saving up for another potential guarantee that may be coming in the future. We could end up seeing, for example, a, a rerun of one of these others. Like maybe we'll get another Lust banner. And it might not be a bad idea to pick up A1 for Lust because of that defense reduction. It could be really beneficial. Um, I.e., same thing for someone like, you know, Falcha. Falcha's not the greatest, but her A1 is definitely not bad. So, you know, there are a lot of potentials out there that we could end up seeing another guarantee for. Sorry, I had to cough there. So what I would say is take a look at your account, decide, you know, based off of your resources, if you're prepared for a 250 or you could be prepared for a 250 with a minor investment based off of where you are when it comes to your pity. And that's going to be the way to decide whether or not it makes sense to go in on this banner. Anyways, guys, I just wanted to make this real quick one. We're a little over 10 minutes now. Hopefully it made sense. If it doesn't, leave comments in the or leave your questions in the comment section down below, and I'll do what I can to give you more insight in my replies there. Make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you liked the video, and don't forget to subscribe as it really does help push the channel out to other people. I hope to see you guys in the next one. Peace.